how come when you see a black woman who's not suffering every single day of her life, you get angry? Let's talk about that because in this video, I want to talk about the black girl luxury movement, the historical representation of black women, and just the double standards of luxury. For centuries, the world has told black women who we are and most importantly, who we aren't. We've been cast as stereotypes, the Mammy, the Jezebel, the Sapphire, the welfare queen, the uneducated, the worthless. And honestly speaking, these narratives have been as pervasive as they are damaging. But here's the thing about black women. We have always found a way to challenge the world's expectations. And now one of the many ways that we're doing that is through the black girl luxury trend. I honestly think before we even get into what black girl luxury is, we need to first start with the historical representation of black women. To understand the significance of the black girl luxury movement, we first need to confront the deeply ingrained stereotypes that shapes the way society views black women. These stereotypes didn't just come out of nowhere. They were deliberately constructed and perpetuated through media, policy, and the culture. All to dehumanize black women and justify our marginalization. All right, so let's start with number one, the mammy stereotype. This might be one of the most violent stereotypes of all, the mammy. She's the loyal, self-sacrificing caretaker. A good example is Aunt Jemima with her wild smile and subservient demeanor. This image was born out of slavery and then reinforced during the Jim Crow era, portraying Black women as happy, nurturing figures whose sole purpose in life was to serve white families. You is kind, you is smart. Just hold on and suck it! The Mammy was a tool of propaganda. It was honestly just a way to erase the brutal realities of slavery by making it seem like Black women were so content in their oppression. It suggested that Black women didn't desire freedom or wealth or independence because they were naturally suited for servitude. Then there's the Jezebel, the stereotype that hypersexualized Black women. Unlike the Mammy who was desexualized, the Jezebel was crafted to portray Black women as promiscuous and morally corrupt. It's honestly so unfortunate because this myth originated during slavery when the colonizers and those who were enslaving Black people would use it to justify the sexual violence that they would do upon Black people, especially Black women. Meat, sugar hill, sexiest, deadliest chicken town. The Jezebel stereotype has continued to be depicted in popular culture, where Black women are often typecast as overly seductive and just super sexual all the time. It reinforces the idea that Black women's bodies are available all the time, all the time, just ready for the taking. And that is so scary, especially because not only does it objectify Black women, but at the same time, it denies them agency over their own body and their own sexuality. Next up, we have the Sapphire. The Sapphire is also known as the angry Black woman. This trope paints Black women as combative, domineering, and just perpetually angry. Angry all the time. While the mammy stereotype makes Black women look so docile and quiet and subservient, the sapphire stereotype is essentially the exact opposite of that. The sapphire stereotype is often depicted as just being loud and argumentative and aggressive for no reason. Michael, get your feet off my damn couch before I slap the jam out of your toes. The prevalence of these characterizations helps solidify enduring, damaging assumptions that Black families are more likely to be broken or dysfunctional, defined by an absent Black father and an overbearing Black mother. And this stereotype is again so awful because not only does it dehumanize Black women, but it also silences them. How many Black women do you know in real life who are scared to speak up or scared to speak their mind or share their opinion or are forced to be introverted and shy because they're scared of being relegated as that angry Black woman? As a Black woman, you can say anything like, oh, I don't even really like apples like that. And people will be like, why are you getting angry? Why are you raising your voice? Why are you da -da? And it ties into that sapphire stereotype. When black women advocate for themselves or speak out against injustice, they are immediately labeled too difficult or too angry. The sapphire stereotype ensures that black women's anger, even when justified, is delegitimized. It's just Ill like, it's just immediately false. It doesn't even matter if what you're angry about is a good reason to be angry. 
it's automatically just seen as, oh, you're being too emotional, you're being too difficult, or you're being too angry. Today, the sapphire remains a fixture in reality TV. And the angry Black woman trope has been weaponized against any Black woman who dares to speak out against systemic oppression and injustice perpetrated against her. All right, so next up, we have the welfare queen. During the late 20th century, a new stereotype emerged. Wow, thank you so much. We just love constantly being dehumanized. So this one portrays Black women as lazy, uneducated, and just exploiting government assistance. This stereotype was actually popularized during Ronald Reagan's 1976 presidential campaign. The welfare queen became a symbol of economic scapegoating, despite the fact that welfare statistics did not align with the racialized image that they were trying to push. I'm going to fact check right now. The majority of recipients are white at 43%, followed by Hispanic at 26%, and Black people at 23% even though that's something that we have access to the same way that other people do. This stereotype is used to justify cuts to social safety nets and only paints Black women as burdens to society, which further puts us in that box that tells us that we are undeserving of upward mobility or financial success. So all of this just ties into the modern media and how it continues to reinforce these stereotypes. These stereotypes aren't just confined to history or like, 100 to 200 years ago. They've only just persisted and evolved in modern media. From reality TV shows that exaggerate conflict between Black women. Bitch, yeah. Google it. Tell us. You bitch. You too, I you bitch. Him him. To the lack of diverse roles in film and television, these caricatures continue to influence the public perception of Black women. Even today, in 2024, we're almost in 2025, when Black women show that they're driven or goal-oriented, they're immediately still labeled as too loud, too aggressive, a welfare queen, or we're told to stay in your place, know your role. When you were labeled that angry Black woman, was that one of the things that knocked you back a Well, that bit? was one of those things that you just sort of think, dang, you don't even know me. Yeah. You know? I mean, you just sort of feel like, wow, where'd that come from? Yeah. Or when Black women embrace sexuality, we're still labeled as promiscuous. And then when we seek rest or luxury, we're seen as too lazy or too materialistic. It's like there's no winning. The weight of these stereotypes isn't just societal. It's deeply personal. They have shaped the way that Black women are treated in workplaces, in schools, and even within our own communities. I can't even tell you the amount of times that I have been punished for doing well in school. I've been given detention because the, I've been told, you know, we didn't really expect things from people like you. The amount of times I've been told people like you throughout my life, especially at public school, was nuts. I've had my parents called because they just could not believe that I was doing so well in school. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who's experienced this. That just goes to show that they had these deeply ingrained stereotypes of what it means to be a Black girl. And they thought, okay, there's no way that this girl could exceed those expectations. And it goes to show again how deeply personal and racist these stereotypes are because it limits Black women. In detention, I've either just had to sit in silence while they figure out what to do next, or I've had to retake the test in front of them to prove that I was actually as smart as I was the first time I took the test. They just can't fathom the idea of a Black woman or a Black girl doing well. All of these stereotypes just deny Black women the space to be fully human, to be vulnerable, joyful, complex, and deserving of rest. This is all the more reason why representation matters and why movements like Black Girl Luxury are kind of transformative. They're breaking free from the historical chains and they're showing the world that yes, Black women can have luxurious lifestyles, they can rest, they can have high earning income, they can have their own homes, they can be wealthy. Like, it's so, it's crazy because it's just basic common knowledge to assume that, yeah, some people, they will have upward mobility in life. But the fact that it gets people so upset and makes them feel like, well, this is not fair. How can you buy an apartment? Who do they think they are? I've given the best years of my life to this place and they think they can just fire me like that? Like trash? I don't think so. It's like, brother, <laughs> we are trying so hard to elevate in a world that has so many systemic obstacles stacked against us. And you see one person that has a nice apartment, 
and you're like, this is unacceptable. You must have done blah, blah, blah to get to that type of lifestyle. And yet they see a black woman who maybe gets her hair done every once in a while, or she's investing in stocks or whatever the case is, and it makes people upset. The Black Girl Luxury Movement isn't just about having material goods. It's about showing the world that Black women are also worthy of abundance and ease. I honestly think it's almost like a rebellion against centuries of erasure, limitation, and dehumanization of Black women. It's a declaration that Black women deserve to be seen in our fullness, educated, thriving, joyful, not absolutely riddled with stress. All right, so let's get into the rise of the Black girl luxury movement. The Black girl luxury movement, popularized by creators like Anita A, is more than just materialism. It's about freedom. Freedom to exist in abundance, to indulge in self-care, and to create a life rooted in joy and ease. It doesn't have to be about, yes, I'm buying this $25,000 bag and blah, blah, blah. It can literally just be, while wow, I am working towards getting my degree and I eventually want to get this type of job and I eventually want to live this type of lifestyle so that I can relax, so that I can have peace of mind. Because peace of mind, as we all know, is a luxury. I don't know why for some people, like the idea of black girl luxury means that everybody needs to be flying to Greece or whatever the case is. But that's not all luxury means to everybody. Luxury could just be, I'm so proud of myself for getting a degree. I'm so proud of myself because I was able to buy my first car. Whatever the case is, luxury means different things for different people. Black girl luxury means that I do not drive. How many people have been socialized to believe they have to have a car? And if they have a car, they have to be the one driving. And so I believe luxury is a matter of choice. And if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. So if I don't want to drive, I'm not going to drive. Gosh, that means you're spending a lot of money on Ubers. Okay, well, and you're spending a lot of money on whatever you want to spend your money on. And that's your business. And that's my choice and my decision. And most importantly, it's a rejection of that narrative that Black women have to constantly struggle to be seen as worthy. Luxury in this context is not just about buying Chanel bags or constantly, again, flying all over the world. It is about claiming space in a world that has constantly tried to keep us out. It's about saying, I deserve this. I've earned this and I'm not apologizing for it. So with that being said, let's get into the double standards of luxury. When black women step into luxury, the world has a problem with it. They're called materialistic, shallow, or flaunting our wealth. Meanwhile, other groups have always enjoyed the spoils of luxury without being criticized at the same level that black women have. I'm not saying they've never been criticized. We've all seen the eat the rich type of content. But I am saying that when black women just let her buy a pair of shoes and she's getting doxxed, what is the reason for that? I think we should have that conversation. You have people like Elon Musk literally buying a social media site so that he can spread propaganda, okay, as well as monitor the sites and limit how much people are able to talk about things that are going on politically or socially, allegedly. That's someone that has billions of dollars. You'll have black women being like, hey guys, I just started a new job in tech. And people will be like, you know that tech company? You're not deserving of it. Who do you think you are? What do you even do? I bet all you do is post selfies and create, and it's like, whoa. Things aren't adding up here. Anger that is directed towards a black woman who's just trying to live her life is literally not even remotely the same as those who are destroying the world right in front of us. Like you'll just have a black woman who posts on TikTok or Instagram who's like, me and my husband going on vacation in France. And the comments will be like, bullshit, she better not have. Whoa, folks. Uh, this is kind of scary. Aren't you scared? Like, that is such a weird reaction. Do you want to constantly see Black women on the internet being like, wow, my life is so hard. I hate it here. I'm struggling. I got this. I got that. Like, everything is bad. Is that the type of content that you want to see? Because that's giving trauma porn. It just ties into that double standard that Black women have to work twice as hard to get half of what others get. You have to constantly prove yourself. You have to prove why you're deserving of rest. You have to prove why you're deserving of living a life that's comfortable. You have to prove why you're deserving of having a car. It's sad because by the time we finally get to enjoy the fruits of our labor, we're condemned for it. Like we already know how hard it is for black women to have upward mobility. There's so many studies to this day that explain how hard it is for black women to get a manager position or to be a part of a board of directors or whatever the case is, even just getting into school. We have seen school to prison pipeline. 
we have so many examples of how racism and discrimination impact the ability of Black people, especially Black women, to overcome obstacles in life. Let's not be delusional. We're not living in a, the future where everyone is equal. There's still so much systemic inequality that we are facing. And so when we do see someone who is finally living a life that they are comfortable and they're not worried about a lot of different issues that someone who may not have a lot of money or resources does, instead of attacking them, maybe it could be like, oh, wow, can you give us some pointers? Or like, do you have any advice? What are some scholarships that you would recommend? Nothing of this sort. That is never the type of reaction that they get. And there's this quote by Danielle Prescott that I absolutely love. And it says, when is it our time to sit with our spoils and just be? In the 1700s, laws like the Negro Act were created to police the clothing of enslaved people, which forbid them. So it absolutely banned them from wearing clothing that was seen as too opulent or even just good quality. And then we fast forward to the 1990s and we have luxury brands that absolutely refuse to associate with hip hop artists or just black people in general. And then on top of that, we know that a lot of luxury brands refuse to even cast black models. This hoodie with a rope tied as a noose. Just a few weeks before, Gucci was the subject of widespread outrage for this turtleneck that went viral for its likeness to blackface. Before that, Prada pulled this $550 monkey keychain after a social media post went viral claiming it mimicked racist imagery. I think sometimes it is so blatantly racist, it's disgusting. No black girls allowed on a lot of the breakdowns for castings or things like that. Like, we're not looking for black girls, we want white girls only. A lot of these brands were not and are still not willing to work with black people. We got brands like Lululemon, who the founder is like, I literally don't want you guys wearing my clothes. That's not even really a luxury brand. That's just athleisure. And he's out here saying, don't wear my stuff. If you are a Black person, I don't understand why you're wearing my clothing. It was not made for you. That is honestly noodles just to think about. And yet that's what we're dealing with in present day. So when Black women step into these spaces now and wear what we want, and travel where we want, and just do what we want, it is revolutionary, especially considering how many odds are still stacked against us to this day. It's just a reminder that we belong, even in spaces that weren't designed for us. And so obviously it wouldn't be me if I didn't also talk about the critiques of the Black Girl Luxury Movement, because obviously two things can be true at once. For example, some people argue that it sometimes leans too much towards consumerism or glorifying capitalism in a way that feels exclusionary. So unfortunately, there are some creators who make it seem like if you aren't making as much as they are or living the same type of lifestyle that they are, then you are worthless, which is like, okay, we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to make sure that it's not exclusionary or it doesn't demean or diminish people's value or attributes their value as a human being to how much money they have, that is obviously not the goal and that shouldn't be something that we are promoting in our messaging. And then obviously another downside is when we're trying to convince you that they're living luxuriously when in reality they are doing things that might be putting them in harm's way or they're promoting a lifestyle to their audience that could potentially also put them in harm's way. I feel like instead of talking about abundance and rest and living a life of ease, they are instead pushing lifestyles or a type of work that is unethical or is dangerous. Because then at that point, we do have to criticize what type of messaging that creator is posting and what they're trying to influence their audience to do. But that is not the case for everyone who participates in this Black girl luxury movement. And that's not the case for a lot of Black women, period. And then obviously the other side of the criticism is that I am Christian. I've always been Christian. I'm always going to be Christian. And so I understand when some people put money as like the sole purpose of life or they put material goods as their source of happiness. That's when I'm like, oh, 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 you can't get me. Wealth and material goods aren't the ultimate goal. Jesus is the ultimate goal. Don't exit the video. And, and, and we've won another battle. But regardless, to dismiss Black Girl Luxury outright completely misses the point. This movement isn't just about things. It's about empowerment, positive representation, 
and reclaiming our narratives. The overall principle of Black Girl Luxury is very simple. It's the joy of doing whatever you want with your own money. It's about living unapologetically on your terms. And I feel like what's also really powerful about this movement is how it also uplifts our community. Black Girl Luxury isn't just about buying other brands. I feel like something that I've learned a lot from this movement is also black owned brands that I could look into and make purchases from. And it really has been very beautiful to see people support and celebrate black owned businesses. Black women have been owners and pioneers and trendsetters from the beginning of time. Now we're finally being recognized as the architects of our own luxury. I don't think the black girl luxury movement is going anywhere. It's a way of saying I am worthy of rest and joy and abundance because I exist. You don't need to do any specific thing to be a part of the Black Girl Luxury Movement. Because you exist, you deserve all the good things that this world has to offer. So the next time you see a Black woman enjoying her life or posting in the Black Girl Luxury trend or tag or whatever the case is, take a deep breath. Like, relax, take it easy before you immediately go on the side of criticism. Ask yourself, why does her joy feel threatening to me? Luxury looks different to different people. If your version of luxury is buying a designer bag or a quiet moment with a good book, just know that you deserve it, not because you've worked twice as hard, but because you exist. Joy is your birthright. Everybody sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Regardless, no one, not history, not society, not a single critic can take that away from you. Anyways, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.